Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the second day of the MAG meeting. And um, without further ado, because we've got a lot to get through today, I'll hand it over to our chair, Lynn Santamore, to start. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Changatai. Um, welcome back to everyone. And is the online participation set? Volumes okay? And excellent. Um, I think I like this room better than the other one. It feels somehow cozier and maybe more inducive to, to getting a lot of work done today because we certainly have a lot of work um, in, in front of us. Um, this morning I pulled together um, and reviewed with the Secretariat sort of a, a list of things that I think we need to accomplish today or make significant progress on and then items that we can um, push forward as we historically have done to um, virtual meetings. And I think we're working to um, put that up in just a minute with a brand new USB stick. <laughs> the, um, one second. It's pretty um, straightforward, so as soon as I pull it up here again, um, we'll just start start talking to it, and then Eleanor will put it up, and of course the, the scribes will actually capture it here as well. So for, um, first of all, I think we actually made uh, quite a bit of progress yesterday in terms of coming to what felt in the room like um, pretty broad agreement for um, an approach which would actually have at least a piece of the IGF program, for lack of a better word, and all suggestions are really welcome, curated. Um, and, and that only means that, you know, one of the other analogies people use was kind of sideways. We have the bottom-up program and the issues and the topics and things, but that there was clearly a desire on the behalf of the broad community to be a little more cohesive in the overall program, whether it's looking across all the program components or whether it's trying to be more cohesive in terms of themes and topics. Some people talked about streaming them differently. Um, others talked about ensuring that there was a, um, a, a thoughtful linkage between the programs that were actually uh, the, the workshop sessions that were structured over the course of the week. So all that implies that there's a more active role for the MAG in terms of nurturing some pieces of the, of the program. Um, I think that was pretty clear through the stock taking exercise in the open mic at the end of the last IGF. Um, in, in fact, I think we've heard that for a few now, and certainly in the more formal stock taking exercise um, with the secretary compilation as well. So, with that, I'm, I'm, I know that there were a number of side meetings or smaller meetings over the course of the night because my email was full this morning of um, su some suggestions, and interestingly enough, from three of the different parties, they were all the same suggestion, <laughs> which I think um, hopefully bodes well for the work we're trying to, uh, to accomplish here today. The, um, the work that's actually in, in front of us for today is um, at some level a, a, an overall theme. Last year, I think we even called this sort of a title at some point to the overall um, conference. I think we need to make a little bit of progress on that today, but I also think we can finalize that in um, some virtual meetings going forward, <coughs> albeit quite quickly. We need to have a discussion on best practice forums, which ones we, we as the MAG, um, might want to charter going forward. We've had a major intercessional um, policy program it's called Connecting and Enabling Net Experience. That's been running for three years in three different and discrete phases. Um, I think there's a desire on the part of the CENB folks for a fourth phase, which they will present <coughs> briefly to us later today. And I think the MAG needs to decide if we're going to support that work and move forward with it or whether or not we think there's a different um, policy uh, program that should be prioritized instead. I, I don't think as a community we could at this point in time, support two major programs. So we'll have that discussion um, this afternoon. We have a number of working groups that were in place last year. Um, they are sort of MAG specific, so we need to review those working groups and determine which ones go forward. Um, at some point, we could possibly um, 
kind of conditionally approve some and review the charter later. Some I suspect we probably need to go away and develop a charter and then come forward and approve those um, going forward as well. We need to agree a rough timetable for our work. Um, we talked about that the other day in terms of um, supporting the programmatic work and various calls to the community for um, various types of input. That also drives, of course, when our next physical um, meeting is. So there were a, a couple of proposals which were put out by the Secretariat um, a week or so ago, and those are up under the reference um, documents linked to this meeting. And then I think the um, uh, last critical piece of work for us today is to work on the um, call for workshop proposals, <coughs> whatever um, form. <coughs> Somebody um, should mute. <laughs> um, we, we need to agree um, in whatever format that actually takes uh, the timetable and the process for actually getting the call for proposals out. Um, and again, that needs to happen. The call for proposals needs to go out roughly in the next three to four weeks. The future um, work, just so people don't think we're neglecting some pieces of the work, and this is now up on the screen and um, hopefully it's being shared with all the online participants as well. The future work which we're supposed to put to um, virtual meetings is the um, uh, main sessions. I think the main sessions will depend somewhat on the uh, approach this group takes with respect to um, either some themes determined now or determined through community input. Um, whether we sort of curate some specific themes or not, but that clearly is a piece of work we need to do. Um, we need to figure out where the best practice forums, open forums in DCs, where and how, um, as well as in NRI collaborative sessions, fit into the overall IGF program. There were lots of discussions to ensure that we were doing everything we could to, to support in, in a, in a two-way direction all those efforts um, so that we actually leverage, you know, the, the ecosystem as fully as we can, again, both for the benefit of the annual program, but absolutely for the benefit of those individual efforts as well. And that was about the increasing collaboration. Um, it's also about ensuring that we actually have a cohesive um, annual meeting. And if you scroll, yes, down there. Um, we also need some discussions going forward about the opening session and the closing session as well. Um, we spoke yesterday about the fact that um, um, we piloted a different process for the opening session um, and we need to have a discussion on whether or not that's a process that we go forward and continue to evolve or um, is there something else in, in someone's mind. We had quite a few discussions on the Geneva messages um, and a request to have a, a discussion on that, which I think is, is really important and needed with respect to um, what that process was, what we might do with it, where else if we decide to carry it forward, it might be, um, be applied. We have a discussion on day zero, um, which again, we had a good start at that in the um, open community event. Um, at the same time, high level events, depending on whether we're on plan A or plan B for our um, meeting this year. Again, Plan A assumes it's a meeting like every other meeting with a host country um, who has actually invited us to their country and they, of course, have a very big say on those high-level events. Plan B was a basically UN or community hosted IGF um, in that it would require funding and support from um, the community broadly. It would also mean that we, the MAG, I think can take some more responsibility for high-level events or some of the events that a normal um, host or host country might have. So if this, if the MAG determined that um, some high-level, they used to be called um, ministerial meetings and then they were high-level meetings and they've had various titles over the years, but the intent was to pull in um, uh, very senior policymakers and, and government people. If we think that is appropriate and helpful. Again, one of our key goals is bringing in more um, government and private sector participation. Then I think there's an opportunity for the MAG to structure 
um, something. I think we have a similar opportunity even if there is a host country, but um, fuller responsibility if in fact there's not a, a traditional host country. And um, the last one is I, we just need to have a brief conversation on our virtual meeting planning sort of schedules and expectations and that sort of thing. Before we actually go to the, the first item, is there any kind of comments or reflections, anything I forgot from people who have been through this process before? Don't see the um, queue at the moment. <coughs> We've got the screen projected, so I'm not. Okay, so it's empty. Thank you, Eleonora or Luis. Eleonora. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing missing. Um, enough to start with now. You know, as we, we go forward, I would work with the Secretariat and certainly for any of the items that we're moving to a virtual meeting, we can actually put some context behind what each one of those are and schedule them out over the virtual meetings and make sure we've got the reference documents associated with them and, and that sort of thing. I mean, I'm really trying to be mindful in everything I say that um, I think by my kind of counts, probably two thirds of the MAG are either new or within their first year. So I wanna make sure that I'm not moving too quickly um, and assuming too much about sort of people's familiarity with past practices and processes. Um, at the same time, obviously, trying to get a lot of work done in, um, yet again, a compressed timetable. Well, then, um, if we're okay with that, let me go back to the, um, the discussion that we were, we were um, closing on yesterday. And there, there have been a, a couple of proposals, and maybe I'll open it up in a moment to those folks that have been on the email list suggesting ways forward. But I think where we got to yesterday um, is, is sort of an approach that would actually have the MAG, I think initially sending a, a note out to the community, and maybe it literally is just a note sort of talking about some of the uh, deliberations we've had here, where we're um, heading or intending to head. But the, the note would say something like that the MAG would like to work with the IGF community to pilot a more curated approach um, to a um, portion, I think Eleanor had better words, but it's escaping me at the moment, um, of the agenda. Um, and exactly what form that more curated approach might take is still under discussion, and that we'd like to advance that with input from the IG community, the IGF community. One of the, actually three of the suggestions, last night before I went to bed it was one, this morning it was three of um, the same suggestion basically, um, was that um, that portion of the IGF agenda would begin with an open call for issues. Maybe having identified some broad, some small number of broad themes, maybe not. Um, and that that process, along with the MAG's own deliberations, would determine what that more curated portion of the um, IGF program might look like. The three proposals I actually got in were all based off of the EuroDIG and CDIG um, model, I guess, as well. And I know there have been a, a couple of emails that have been sent to the MAG. Eleanor is prepared to show them here, because I think if we actually understand a little bit more about that process, that will put into context some of the possibilities in front of us. And um, in parallel, unless we think we wanted to adopt a process like that, or a different process, that's just, that's the only concrete proposal I've actually seen um, for a process. For the, if we wanted to identify, if we wanted to adopt that process for the entire um, uh, IGF program, we could, and that would be the one call. I see people that are really familiar with the process saying, no, that would be too far. Um, which would mean if we, again, I'm just trying to lay out kind of the, the possibilities so people get kind of a broad scope here. It would mean that we might have a portion of the um, IGF program that would 
follow this kind of more curated approach, starting with an open call for issues and another piece of the program, um, which would actually look um, much more like the traditional MAG program, open call for workshops and um, structured that way. And I see heads nodding in the room here. Um, obviously can't see that for the online participants, but, um, but that's what is obviously in the back of some people's minds. So what, um, and we could potentially launch those at different times, you know, it, it's entirely viable from my two and a half hours of discussions last night on this particular um, topic and some of the things I've looked at quickly this morning, it seems it'll be entirely possible to do a really quick open call for issues, um, which would maybe help us understand what some of the themes were, which would fit into the main sessions um, and um, might even influence the call for workshop sessions that we put out a, a little bit later, um, which would help certainly ensure some kind of cohesiveness across the entire program. Um, for those of you that are online, as I look around the room, there's lots of heads nodding, um, nodding yes to, you know, most components of this, this discussion here. So, um, and I would say from all stakeholders and um, all, uh, uh, different geographic regions as well. It's not just the Europeans <laughs> in the room that are actually um, nodding their head yes to this, um, to this approach. So I think I'll ask, and I'm not sure quite who's the best person to ask. It might be Thomas. He's on the Eurodig board and was one of the people who was quite active in that yesterday. It could be um, Arnold who's been active. It could be between a whole host of, of people in here have had some familiarity with that. Israel actually um, looked at the proposal that came in and said some comments to the MAG list um, early this morning that said this was very much aligned with some of the things you were suggesting yesterday. So we have ready to um, project the, the various pieces of that process. So, you know, I don't know if you want to quickly confer amongst yourselves and determine who would be the best person to speak to it or Thomas, do you? We can pull up any of the forms if that helps, so, or do you just want to do a intro first? Thank you. I don't know whether Sandra <coughs> is uh, also uh, following remotely, so of course she may also be a person to, to, to present it, or, or Serena, that I don't know to what extent she was involved. Um, otherwise, yeah, if, if you wish, you can just put up the, the form that the s several people apparently sent to you last night, but how we did. <clears throat> the call for for issues and how we framed it and, and how the form concretely looked like what we were asking people to tell us Eleanor just said it's coming up in just a moment so um, I don't know if you want to talk even just generally about some of the okay so so basically this this was um, as I and others said already yesterday in the beginning we did the same thing like like the IGF we were asking for workshops uh, workshop proposals, and then we had the same problem that, that the IGF had, has that we get many uh, proposals and we don't have enough uh, slots for sessions. We in, at Eurodic, this is a two-day meeting where we have something like five, six plenaries and about eight workshops, so the number is much more limited. And then we, after a few years, we decided that it would actually be easier for everybody to to not ask for concrete workshop proposals and then somehow having to merge them and enforce or encourage people to work together. But in order to get the priorities to identify the, the baskets and the priority issues, to ask for issues that people would like to see discussed. And what you see now, and, and every year we adapted this a little bit according also the questions that we ask people according to what we thought worked, worked best. <clears throat> and actually, it was not just a relief for the secretariat and for the for the core team. It was also a relief for those who had to or could submit ideas, because many times uh, these proposals are made in the last minute, and then people just figure out potential to be defined uh, panelists, and so that it looks like that it formally fulfills all the criteria, but not, there's not necessarily all the substance already behind it. And and uh, so if people can just come up. And it's also opening doors if people can just tell us what are the issues that they think need to be discussed. Um, 
it's not only the usual suspects that, that normally have the experience and the time to develop workshop proposals, but it, it is also easier for newcomers, for others to join in if they can just say, well, I'd like to, to be part of a discussion on this, or I don't even have to be part, but I'd like to see a discussion or, or, uh, on, on this issue, on this particular question. Um, and, and so that has now it's, it's uh, completely unquestioned that, that we do it this way. And as Arnold has said yesterday, these, these baskets, they basically emerged also on the basis of, of the experience with the IGF and with the Eurodig and with the clusters. And uh, yeah, so we hope that you will see it on the screen fairly soon. It's it's the link that is in in the mails that that you got that should display. Uh, th thank you, thank you, Thomas. Um, and we should all remember to obviously I called him Thomas. You probably knew who he was, but say who we are and the affiliation. That's Thomas Schneider with the Swiss government. Um, before we continue on, while this was coming up, let me just ask, um, Liesl and Arnold are in the queue. Do you have um, sort of some general comments or? Questions for clarification while we wait for the forms to, to come up? Lazel? Um, I, I did put my name in the queue mainly to get, I think what you've already started is the little bit explanation of the feedback you had heard and some greater explanation of the processes that um, people were talking about um, as far as the curated approach that you're talking about and the and then since I tend to go to mechanics of, of how things work then you know sort of what the what is the beginning middle and end of any of these any of these approaches but I realized I might have put my hand in the queue a little bit early but um, so I took it off again but it didn't show but uh, but now that I have a chance I guess one thing I just maybe throw into the mix here is I I think I heard a little bit more of a combination yesterday of the curated approach. I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with understanding it as part of the program vis-a-vis -vis all of the program. Because I think part of the conversation yesterday was also about limiting the number of workshops and number of parallel sessions. And I don't know that the curated approach was meant to take a piece of that, whatever that number tends, it ends up being, if that's what we agree to do. Uh, carving out a piece of that or just put taking that approach to the whole program. Um, so I'm still a little unclear about that. So I look forward to this descriptions. Well, let me... Um, These descriptions, thank you. Yeah, l let me try and answer a couple of your uh, last questions before we come to the... And, and again, just because there are so many new people, the IGF, uh, yeah, the IGF program last year had roughly 200 sessions. Probably um, 110 of them were actually kind of workshops and the NRI collaborative sessions, 45 open forums, some DCs, and that's the, the compilation. And there is the um, document which is called the Program Components Document, which talks about it, what each one of those component pieces are, um, who has sort of oversight responsibility for them, some reference documents for them. It does talk to what their status was in 2017. I don't think it has a number against them, but we could do that easily offline. So when people talk about the IGF program having too many tracks and too many um, repetitive sessions, um, I think there was agreement that we captured yesterday which said there was support for the MAG for reducing the number of parallel sessions. We've typically had 11 tracks, 11 rooms available to us. <coughs> and also in doing what we can to reduce the repetitiveness. A more positive way to say that is to ensure that it's cohesive and that the various pieces build on each other. Um, so I don't know, I mean, it, it, it's possibly a little bit early in the planning stage, but I would have guessed we're probably looking at, also maybe knowing a little bit of something about the possible venue, we're probably looking at eight tracks or something in, in parallel, which I think would, would serve the reduction in parallel tracks well, um, and um, that obviously reduces the total number of sessions um, available to us. And the um, ensuring a more cohesive program would come through, I think, some additional activities of the MAG. Maybe some overall, um, you know, more, more um, thoughtful scoping to make sure it's cohesive and the various sessions are building on each other. 
And then, yes, a piece of this curated approach would have been some of those sessions or, or tracks. So I don't, I, I honestly don't know. I haven't had a number from it. Maybe it's, you know, two out of the eight sessions a day or something are dedicated to this kind of curated track. Or maybe it's, you know, something across them. I don't know. We haven't had that level of definition. But it's, it's not an addition to the curated components. Um, yesterday, I think for a while we were using the thematic components, but I think that's a little confusing because the workshop proposals will also be thematic in, in nature, um, are, a, are a subset of the overall program. They're not additive to it, if that answers your question. Though I have to say you're looking a little puzzled. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, for the people that are in the queue, um, do you want to make your comments now, or should we actually walk through the uh, description of the forms and the process first? The next person in the queue would have been, uh, I guess Arnold took his hand down, so it would have been Raquel. You want to come in now? Okay, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, so I also want to share that uh, within my Mag Latin Mag colleagues, Alejandro Erasmus, Israel Rosas, and Nacho Estrada, we've been in conversations. And uh, perhaps I brought this up uh, later in the afternoon uh, yesterday, and it, it's missed. But uh, the Lakai Jeff has also uh, had a similar approach. Uh, we've been uh, doing the open consultations for the topics. And once the community uh, shares their main topics. The program committee is responsible to curate and organize the agenda. This year, we've also uh, adopted a mixed approach, and we are doing this testing uh, on an innovative format, which uh, will continue to have the online consultations and uh, the open consultations for the topics, for the main topics. But we are also holding four, uh, four sessions or four uh, clusters that are going to be organized directly by uh, the stakeholders in, in, in the program committee. So um, I just want to emphasize this example. And also, uh, we've been uh, in fully agreement on, on the approach that will bring us on reducing the number of the, the sessions, on promoting a more focused and concrete discussions, including the innovative formats, um, and simplify this extra structure uh, for the IGF. Uh, so I just want to uh, put the support forward and, and that we really need to look and perhaps keep in mind, and I think Lisa uh, was also bringing this up, I mean, uh, if, we, if we are in the new format, then it will make it easier also to review this kind of approach. Thank you, Raquel, that was very helpful. Um, Paul, I'm, I'm used to where everybody was sitting relative yesterday, so when I see your name in the speaking queue, I'm still trying to identify where you are physically in the room. But, um, Paul, did you want to come in on this now, or do you want to move to a, a, the next step in the description of the process? There you are. <laughs> come in later or come in now? Okay. And I see Sandra's up there as well. Is Sandra? Sandra's participating online, so you'll either need to watch the transcript or put headphones in. And Sandra, you have the floor. Hello, everyone. It's Sandra speaking. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, wonderful. I'm so sorry that I cannot be with you. It's actually my first open consultation mark meeting I'm missing since a while, but it was just too much travel in the past. So I see you online, and I feel a bit sad for not being with you. Um, since Eurodic and our call for proposals, how we are conducting this, was mentioned a couple of times, I would just like to give you a very brief overview on how it really works and where actually the obstacles are and the challenges. Um, we are uh, following this approach since, I would say, t two or four years, uh, no, sorry, longer, like four years, and we uh, improved it every year um, from the experience uh, we got. And I would kindly like to invite you to go to the Eurodic website under Get Involved and uh, Program Review. You will have actually a quite good uh, explanation how this uh, process is conducted, and you will find some graphics and so on and so forth. So for those still having questions, this might be a source um, to get more information about our process. Um, 
at Eurodig, we believe that um, merging people with a different view, and Thomas mentioned it yesterday already, merging people with a different view really helps to reduce the sessions, helps to reduce uh, repeated sessions, and brings together people that usually would not talk to each other. Um, as he said already, uh, sometimes the same topic is discussed in different silos because people want to deliver their their perspective. But if we take the multi-stakeholder model serious, we believe that a multi-stakeholder discussion should not only be during the session, but should actually already begin during the session planning process. And um, this is actually a very integral part of uh, how the session is or how the overall program is going to be organized. The Wiki as a collaboration tool is very helpful in this respect. We found we are using it since 2014, but um, I understand that not everyone is uh, able to set up a Wiki rather quickly. Um, the key things in our approach when we call for issues only, which are then merged by subject matter experts, are the following. First of all, it is really, really helpful to set up categories beforehand because otherwise you end up with probably more than 300 or more proposals, and then you are in the dilemma to kind of bring them in an order. But if you uh, offer categories which are, are going to be agreed by the MAC, um, that will help the submitter to say, okay, I want to discuss uh, topic X, Y, Z, but under the aspect of human rights, or I want to discuss this topic under the aspect of uh, security. This gives you actually a very clear direction on how this, uh, in which basket this, this proposal goes. And then um, the second really important thing is that a person with an expertise on the specific category is looking at the proposal. So to say, um, in our point of view, it makes not much sense if the whole mark, or in our case, the Eurodic Secretariat and partners are looking at the proposals, but if dedicated people who really have an expertise, who have um, no personal agenda, who have a broad overview about this category, can bring this somehow in an order. And then the secretariat, together with the subject matter experts, is looking at this. And in, uh, in the case of the IGF, the, this could be the job of the MAC, looking at uh, the clustering. Uh, we are doing it usually at the uh, first open and public planning meeting. I think this could be really the, the MAC consultation or MAC call, whatsoever. And then see how this clustering can be brought into a program, how it can be translated into a program. And this can then go again out for a consultation for the for the for the community, um, for the secretariat, for the IGF secretariat. This would mean a lot uh, more communication with the submitters and with the mark possibly. But we really believe that this process would help first to reduce the number of sessions, second to uh, reduce the repetitions, and third, really to bring people out of their silos and foster a multi-stakeholder process, not only on the session, even in the program planning process. And um, as I'm not there, I will be happy to uh, remain open for questions and comments also by email. And, um, well, I'm following remotely and looking forward to contribute more to um, this approach you, you might be following this year. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Sandra. That was very clear and very helpful. And in the room here and obviously in the online room, we've actually scrolled up to the bottom half of the bottom half of the forum as well to make sure everybody's seeing the full, the full context. Um, unless there's anything else that um, any of the, the people who have actually participated in this process, whether it's the Eurodig process or a Latin American one, wants to at at this point. If not, we'll go to the floors. But any, is there anything else in terms of kind of clarification or, again, this is just to ensure that everybody has the best kind of grounding they can for what this process is before we open it up for discussion. Uh, Israel? And don't forget, of course, to say who you are. And yes, thank you. Chair Israel Rosas from Mexico for the record. In fact, my, my thoughts were more a, a mix of the Euradic model and the like IEF model. It's more like uh, trying to combine all all the, 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 the issues and also the um, the need of, of, of have, uh, having 
I don't know, more concrete sessions. I think that if we took this approach of grouping by baskets or something, we could also reduce the, the parallel sessions, avoiding, avoiding duplicates or, or something like that. Thank you. Thank you, Israel. Well, I'm just so happy I am better at saying it. I had an interesting comment this morning um, just before we started here, um, which I'd like to invite him to, because I think it actually helps extend the kind of process a little bit. And then we'll go to the queue for kind of comments, questions, reactions. So, Wout, you have the floor. Well, to answer this, uh, thank you, Chair. Just to explain why I'm invited, I wrote the report on strength and cooperation on, by request of the MAG, so I'm also invited now to speak a little on that. Um, <clears throat> I've been hearing the discussions yesterday and, the, and this morning, and I would like uh, the, the following. You've been discussing themes and the possibility around the clustering, uh, clustering workshops. So I would like to, to, to add the, vo the, the following. Um, you all have a quite clear view on the topics you mentioned yesterday, and I suppose that those will go forward into some sort of main session, uh, probably. Also around topics that are going to be clustered. One of the things that we, we uh, did in the report is look at how the IGF could become more influential by a form of tangible output. And that is not a no negotiated one, I'm stressing that again, but something that is a message to the world through a best practice or an advice or a sort of agreement to go ahead in their own silos to do a specific task. So if you would like to have more influence, then I'm going, just going to take the the example, skills and education, which was mentioned a few times yesterday. So where is this topic discussed elsewhere in the world? So who is already very knowledgeable on the topic? The second thing you would want to know is what could the IGF add to the discussion that is already there and how can it add to it? And that are questions that you want, want to ask yourself to be able to become more influential. And then you can assess what could the IGF actually do to change the processes that are currently going on. And if we take the example of digital skills, and that's before I come to some sort of questions you could pose to proposals. One side of the example is that there are not enough people coming out of schools and universities that have the right, that the right skills. But that is something different from the set of skills that are being taught that are maybe wrong. Industry is usually saying people come out of schools with the wrong set of skills. So in other words, that is something different that not enough people go to school. There's a totally different problem than what they are taught in the schools. So if you want to settle that, who would you actually need to have on board to be able to have a knowledgeable discussion? That may not be people that are presently and currently coming to the IGF. So the question that you need to ask yourself is how do you get these people into the discussion? Because otherwise you will just be talking in the workshop to each other and all saying, yes, this is a very big problem, but the people who can solve it are not in the room. So that is why I think that the advice I come to is that if you want to do a main theme or a clustered theme around a specific uh, topic around a specific theme, then you could ask a few questions to the people that are proposing, being MAC members themselves or people from outside. So one thing is, is what is the objective you would like to reach through a session at the IGF? Because that gives you focus. It will also give you prioritization. Because the people you invite know exactly what is going to be asked of them. The next question is, who do you need in the panel or in the intersessional work that you're going to do to make sure that the topic is being addressed in the way you want it to be addressed. And the third question you're going to ask him is, what do you need from these people so that they know exactly why they're invited? The fourth question is, are these people likely to be at the IGF? And the answer is yes or no. And if the answer is yes, you know how to, who to go to. If the answer is no, you come to the fifth question, how to get them there. How do you invite these people to come to the IGF and make them understand that it's adamant for them to be present? So if you write this down and decide 
from there. That's probably the way you will get the best tangible output from a main session or a, a cluster theme. And that will actually be a way to make the IGF much more influential and attract much more people that are currently often missing and also always being mentioned missing. And if I can make one little joke, somehow Google knows something more than I do because Bangkok was pushed the whole day as a destination on the top of some ad. ad. So is it an answer? <laughs> do you, do you understand that one? Or the... uh, y yes. <laughs> no, there, there, <laughs> there absolutely is no announcement. And um, these days, it's safer not even speak about what some platforms are doing. <laughs> so um, I think, thank you out. I mean, I did think a couple of those questions. He, he stopped by this morning and said it could be some interesting questions to add to the format, which might help us with you know, probably a, a very significant goal we have, of course, which is more outreach. <laughs> to some um, specific stakeholder communities, but in e organizations um, as well. So let me go to the queue um, then. And if, if we've kind of lost anybody with respect to what we're actually thinking about with respect to the overall, I don't know, frame, if you will, of what we're trying to do at the um, MAG meeting, please don't hesitate to say so. There's, in any of these meetings, there's always a lot of kind of inside speak. And some people have been at every one of the IGFs. Some of them have been on the MAGs for a long time or watching the MAG for a long time. Um, and others, of course, less time. And it's the freshness that you bring that actually helps us rethink things um, quite critically. So if, please, if there's any questions, just just um, jump in here. And certainly feel free to jump in offline if that's more, more comfortable. Um, Mary, Mary, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. My name is Mary Uduma, uh, Nigeria, and um, technical community. M uh, mine is a question of clarification. Um, I want to know whether there's, there's um, I, I, I need to understand the where, where this framework we are trying to establish. Is it different from what has been happening in MAG? Has MAG not been in the previous years uh, processes or preparation? Has there not been call for workshops, call for meeting um, <coughs> topics, and uh, doing tracking and the rest of them? Is it a new format we are trying to develop so that I can I can understand it? And uh, uh, from my own perspective and from my own region, uh, we the secretariat and normally uh, and the bureau. Normally, we, we throw out some topics and uh, we ask people to vote on some topics. That is at the African level. Then at the West African level, we throw, the, the throw it open for everybody to suggest topics. And then we do a, a, a do -do, do -do, uh, vote. And the highest ones are the ones that we take. Then at the national level, we throw it to all the stakeholders, throw it open to all the stakeholders, L like what we're doing now. Our, our, the, the, the organizing committee has received a lot of input, and we are trying to streamline. And um, we would, would uh, try to track one that falls into the categories of um, cybersecurity, openness, and privacy in the uh, 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 Digital, uh, I mean, um, um, connecting the next million, 50 million people in Nigeria, you know, something like that. But I don't know whether it's not been happening that way. So I need to, <laughs> to get it clear. Thank you. No, thank you, Mary. That was a very good and very helpful question. Um, so let me talk just briefly about what the MAG has done the last few years is they've had this and, and I'm going to do kind of an amalgamation of several processes, but just to give a, an overview. The, the MAG has normally had conversations on what should the, the major theme be. Last year, I think it was even gravitating towards what should the kind of title of the conference be so it generates some excitement and enthusiasm. And a few years ago, the MAG used to also choose sub-themes, so maybe cybersecurity and access. And, and they would issue a call for proposals. The community would come in with those proposals. And the MAG would review all, at that point in time, was anywhere from probably 100 to 250 proposals or something, 
would review those proposals and select um, the ones. They, everybody would rate them and rank them. And as you say, the ones with the highest um, ranking were the ones that were chosen with a more thoughtful process on top. We then went back and looked to see if there were gaps with um, some topics not covered, some topics covered too much, um, over or under representation in terms of geography. Um, we looked at ones that had widely disparate scores because maybe that was a really interesting topic. If you had some people that were saying, oh, this is terrible, we don't want this in the bag, and others on the IGF and others saying, we do. So we did a lot of, um, kind of, I'd say, value add on top to try and ensure that we had um, um, a, a good set of workshops. I think we, over the years, um, where we've had more kind of of the intersessional activities coming in. Um, we've had some questions about, is there duplication? Um, is the program cohesive enough? And that led us to a problem statement this, um, this year. I'm not always sure it's a good idea to have this meeting with OISIS, I must say. <laughs> um, we, we, need to, we do need to rethink of that. I mean, there's a lot of people in and out, and you know, I've had three meetings before this one started already, two at every lunchtime, and one's in the evening, and it, it, it takes away something from the meeting. Despite that, of course, you get the chance to meet with an awful lot of other people. But um, coming back to uh, wherever I was, um, so the, the the, the problem statement was how do we actually get more cohesiveness in the program? How do we better integrate all those kind of component pieces? Um, and also at the same time, um, clear calls through the stock taking efforts, to the CSDD working group on improvements, those sorts of things, for more tangible outcomes. <coughs> and um, another way to say that is maybe kind of more intent in really trying to make progress on some issues, not just a, a, a series of good discussions on an issue. So with a little more intent and, and structure to really try and advance issues, those are some of the things very generally we heard through the process. That led um, everybody to saying that maybe we need to um, have a piece of the territory, if you will, of the total program space that the MAG actually, um, whether we do that through MAG deliberations only or whether or not we do that through community input and MAG deliberations, which I think is what everybody's recommending, um, and kind of, I'm trying to find the right word, and again, still need help, directs some of these, you know, helps choose a theme, help directs them, helps scopes them, helps nurture them, you know, help basically curate a, a, a theme or a track or a series of, of workshops, again, with the intent to reduce repetitiveness and progress the issues. The, a, a very significant portion of the workshop process would still follow the traditional workshop process. I think people have suggested that there would still be a call for workshops, maybe against some themes. The last few years we didn't do sub-themes. We allowed people to tag their workshops with the themes that they thought were most appropriate and we aggregate them in that way and could, could review them that way. Um, but that a, a significant portion would follow the open call to the community for workshop proposals that would be evaluated by the MAG against some criteria and streamed into the program. Um, ben, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, this is Ben Wallace. Um, so, yeah, some, uh, a few comments um, on curating, on the MAG curating uh, the IGF this year. Um, I would be concerned if that was done in a way that that undermined the bottom-up nature of the IGF. Um, but I think it, it, it could be helpful and valuable as a way for us to consult the community um, in order to inform us as the MAG on when we're deciding on a theme and deciding on, on some focused, uh, a small group of sub-themes and on deciding how we might want to cluster those workshops, so which are the really popular issues which are gaining a lot of support where we want to make sure there are workshops. Um, I think we just need to be aware that this is going to introduce an extra chunk of work um, at a time when we've obviously unfortunately lost three months due to the late uh, seating of the MAG. Um, and that might mean we want to consider delaying or reducing the other work done in the MAG working groups and you know to kind of make space for this work. Um, we should also consider that the extra step will have an impact on the timeline um, 
for working towards selecting the workshops, which we'll come to later in the day. Um, so I'm not saying we shouldn't uh, take a more curated approach and, and consult the community in this way. I, I think that um, could be helpful and interesting. Just be aware of the extra work it's going to provide us. Um, Vout referred to uh, tangible outputs from these curated sessions. Uh, I talked yesterday about having more uniform and better structured written outputs from IGF sessions and also kind of interest in, in the Geneva messages idea. Um, that's the kind of tangible output I'd be looking to, um, but I mention it in case Vout is thinking of something else. And finally, uh, I want to clarify that what we're talking about when we discuss having uh, fewer sessions. Um, what I wouldn't support is just having fewer workshops and then making way for more sessions of a different nature because um, I, I do think there's value in having fewer sessions overall so that we have a meeting which is, is simpler, it's easier to follow, um, and then I think you get to a point where you can emphasize uh, quality over quantity. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ben, for those comments. Raquel, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you allow me, I just have, uh, before going to the substantive comments, I just have some logistic comments. It appears we have still some problems with remote participation and a delay. So if we can figure out for next meetings, I know it's an IT venue and uh, it's a different kind of uh, preparation, but uh, it's really important and I've been following Twitter also and there are a lot of stuff complained there. Um, and also for the transcripts, uh, I saw when Israel was speaking about Lakai Jeff, it appears Laknik, so <laughs> it's uh, some corrections. Yesterday when I was speaking, apparently it was Robert, so I might attend by that name too, but anyway, flexible gender, but <laughs> we might need to uh, improve a little bit on, on the tools. Um, but just starting on the point of, uh, first, at the point on the Mac uh, role, right, I just, um, I want to emphasize what Lynn was saying. I, I think it's not a criticism on the work that was done before. Uh, on the contrary, it's um, this digest, it's uh, a victim of, of its success. We introduced last year uh, the, method, the new methodology for workshop evaluation, um, and really the ones that were selected uh, were 4.2 or up uh, out of five. So they were really gr uh, well graded. Um, it was really a hard selection. But after that, what we realized within the mag, and my colleagues might my, my, uh, jump in on that too, is uh, there are some balances that you need to do. For example, uh, we realized there were no government proposal um, ac accepted. There were some topics that were not there, like access. So there is some rebalance that you need to do. Uh, and this way, I think it's important, first, not dropping the new methodology that was really good, but uh, uh, perhaps having this curated or the MAG more proactive in the program shaping uh, in the first place might be helpful on, on, on the overall process than doing before. And then you need to work with what you, you have in terms of grading. So just to put some of the context, uh, since this is my second term uh, in the MAG. Um, and on the third point, I want to build perhaps uh, Israel Wald and others were talking about uh, well, thanks, Sandra, for the presentation on the Rurdig. It was really good. Uh, and I think we can build on um, perhaps a mixed approach uh, er between Eurodig, LAC, IGF, and APC proposal on this talk taking. Uh, uh, and I'm going to put some of this, those points. First, um, setting the categories based on uh, the number of the clusters available. So if we have eight slots, I don't know, we, we might need to figure that out. Uh, then we can make sure that we we have this number of categories set by the MAG. Um, then I heard some of the um, uh, comments regarding having fewer parallel sessions versus uh, having you know people uh, willing to do multiple sessions at this and, and not being able to. Uh, I think if we agree that we are going to have fewer sessions and fewer parallel sessions, uh, this is not going to be a problem. The way it is now, 
uh, you need to choose between eight tracks, perhaps, and and that's uh, that's why uh, this feeling of having uh, not having a choice is is, is really uh, seems to me. Um, to be the case, um, and I, I think, uh, and the mixed approach that we are saying about the Lakai Jeff is also to leave some room uh, for contributions on new topics. Um, that's important. Uh, I mean, we can choose the categories, but we, we should still listen to the community and 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 see if we need to have at least an emerging issues session or uh, leave some room for for that. Uh, and for the, the, the APC one, perhaps an, an, uh, on the outreach or output, um, uh, uh, how to improve that is to bring the main sessions or the kind of uh, a kind of wrap up uh, to the end of the IGF. So you have the cluster discussions, you have an output or a summary that goes out for the last day, um, and then you have uh, focused discussions there. Uh, and perhaps, I think it was brought in the first open consultations day also, uh, a kind of uh, the, the Net Mundial style discussions and, and so you have the, the, the stakeholders commenting on something that was concretely, um, uh, that concretely came out from, from uh, the, the workshops. Uh, uh, and I think that's about it by now. I hope I'm trying to help and, and bring some creative uh, process. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel. Definitely helps. It all helps. <laughs> Xiao Feng, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Tao. Uh, I'm from China. Actually, I've been to, I've been attending IGF for 10 years, organizing several sessions, making some presentations. But this is the first time as a MEG member here. According to my experience, for participants, for their very first times, it may be an issue for them to understand the exact, meeting, the exact meaning of the terms like NRI, B, BPF, and DC. I met a gentleman this morning. He was disappointed as his first workshop proposal was declined last year. He is a very famous person in the internet governance area, and he wants to make contribution very much. IGF is an open forum for everyone for, from any country. Those terms are expected to be explained sufficiently in order to make more people involved. More importantly, I expect that IGF should also is, explain why and how these terms are related to everyone of us as clearly as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a good point. And, and apologies. The sheet I put up this morning did just use the acronyms. Um, in, in fact, I mean, if you look up best practice forums, BPFs, um, you'll actually find the documentation that says exactly what they are, where they fit in the program, and which ones the MAG has actually approved in, in past years. Um, just so that we kind of correct that error from this morning, DCs are dynamic coalitions. There are 17 of those. They're listed. Those are um, single issue, um, uh, bottom-up community uh, sets of activities. So Internet of Things, artificial intelligence. It's a group of people that determined that it was appropriate to, at a community level, get together and advance some of them. NRIs, of course, are the, it's not even a straightforward acronym, it's national and regional, sub-regional and youth IGF initiatives, but NRIs, those again, um, uh, you know, we had a presentation the other day, our uh, autonomous um, local uh, IGF initiatives, again, at a regional, sub-regional or, or national um, level, and we do have some that are uh, youth focused as well that um, follow the same practices and principles as the um, IGF does in terms of multi-stakeholder, open, transparent, inclusive, um, those sorts of things. And they basically address, um, are, are meant to address internet issues on a local, regional, or sub-regional level. Um, but that's um, a very good reminder to all of us to not use it, just a lot of internal language and a lot of acronyms without being more thoughtful about it. But there is a wealth of information on the uh, IGF website as well to help provide a lot more, lot more background. Um, um, I'm going to come to 
Paul in a moment. Um, G, can I ask you, because I didn't even see your flag for a while, um, and it's awfully hard to manage an offline and an online queue, and everybody else is using the online queue. So if I could ask you, it does work on mobile phones, um, to use the um, online queue. I will put you in um, after um, Julian there, but it, it's hard, and I, I don't want to forget to put you in the proper place in the queue. So if you could use the online, that would be excellent. I don't know how to use this this, this time, actually. Okay, Lewis, Lewis will, will help you in, in the background, but I will put you in after Julian. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lewis and G. Paul, you have the floor. Uh, uh, th thank you, Chair. I, I just want to add, when, when, when we're putting together these topics and uh, that we're going to discuss at uh, the IGF, is that we remember that uh, it's not an equal world that we live in. And uh, when we look at topics, and you've got topics like AI that means something to the global north, that means something completely different to the global south, where it's used, uh, you know, to infringe human rights, etc. So, what I'm, I'm I'm saying here, we've got to make sure that there's balance in all of the topics, that we don't just address uh, how the technology is driving things in the north and in the developed countries, but how it's impacting uh, the other countries, and it impacts us differently. And we've got to make sure that uh, you know the areas of access are always thought about. And in Africa, you've got uh, areas that are not covered. You've got populations of over 25,000 in villages that have no connectivity at all, have no electricity. And in some countries, it's even, it's even bigger. Affordability, infrastructure, you know, the infrastructure doesn't exist. So when, 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 when I go to a lot of meetings, you know, there's a lot of assumptions made that, uh, you know, to do this, you need this amount of data. And, uh, you know, the, the core infrastructure just doesn't exist where, where we're trying to drive this. Language, of course, I spoke about that yesterday. IT literacy. You know, the, the, the average citizen in, in the Global South is not as literate about technology as, as, as the people in the North. So the, 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 these have to be pertinent things that are recognized. You know, gender divide, you know, it's, it's, it's a big issue in, in our part of the world. Uh, when, when, when we talk about uh, big data, you know, it's, it's, again, it's a different perspective of big data. It's, it's not as well received it in, in the south as it is in the north because that information is used against us as citizens. So I'm, I'm just stating that uh, we, we've got to make sure that there's balance in all of these topics and if we have a topic it should cover both aspects, you know, what is driving in the north and also how it's going to influence uh, what's happening in the south. Thank you. And I think those are, those are very good points and actually I, I think this is where the, um, the Eurodig, LACNIC, CD <laughs> process to not choose any one region um, can be really helpful because I think it can make sure that in fact um, either the the stream or the track or the session actually does address all the all the issues um, fully. Um, I had another point as well, but it's escaped me at the moment. But um, no, I mean I think those are really good points, and, and I think even just labeling things like AI, there's so many different components of AI without even hitting the things you had. I could sit next to somebody who lived on the same street as me, and we have a different perspective of what we mean by AI and what problems we think that's going to create or or opportunities it's going to create. So um, I, I think again, that's that's a good point. Concertina. Okay. I'm here. Okay, so uh, about, uh, thanks, um, uh, thanks, Madam Chair, about uh, choosing uh, the themes. I think um, that uh, um, a, a good way could be to, have, to proceed um, in a parallel way. From one side, maybe we can have uh, a list of baskets that could be circulated between MAG members, so um, each one can add more or, 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 other, or the, the baskets that they prefer to, to, to handle. And at the same time, maybe we can have also the public consultation, so asking people for topics. So at the end, uh, considering the outcome, that comes from the public consultation, we can just fill in each basket and, and also understand if there is uh, some basket that, uh, that uh, has, miss, this be, has been missed for some reasons. Okay. I think that's a very good, good suggestion. Thank you, Constantina. Jennifer? Thank you, Chair, for granting me the floor. Um, this is Jennifer Chung, uh, for the record. Um, I just wanted to react a little bit to some points raised by my colleagues this morning. Um, I think it's a useful exercise to learn 
from good practices that are being used um, around the world, for example, Eurodig, CDIG, Blacknik, and I'm sure um, you know the African IGF is also a, a good point of learning. Um, I just want to say that in in our in our examination and in our learning of this process, we need to also be mindful. Um, I, I guess I can only speak from the Asia Pacific region because I'm most familiar with that um, process. Um, I, I confess I'm not completely uh, familiar with the other processes as well. But just to um, remind, I guess, when we look at it, if we want a curated approach that does not undermine or uh, uh, prevent what is um, bottom up, which has been a tradition that we really long hold dear. And uh, another thing that I heard um, earlier this morning is, I don't know if colleagues were meaning it this way, maybe I interpreted it in the wrong fashion, but um, having subject matter experts at, at these sessions are useful. However, I really caution us to be mindful of newcomers, be mindful of people who are coming to the IGF as newcomers, new blood, who may or may not understand what's going on, and to just go straight into a session and just see, you know, perhaps people who are very well known in their subject matter field just there on the panel. They might feel in some way excluded. So I really don't want us to kind of try to prejudge or curate to um, strongly even though we're trying to make the process more simple. Thank you. No, thank you, Jennifer. They're very good comments. And let me, I, I actually don't see us as walking away from the bottom-up model from two perspectives. I think a significant portion of the MAG, uh, sorry, the IGF program um, is still going to be a bottom-up community call for. And I actually think what we're talking about here is even for the curated piece that there is a, a call, an open call to the community um, for issues that they think should be addressed and dealt with in that topic. So the, that selection of issues or the, the submission of issues, suggestion of issues is still coming from the community. The community and those people that submitted, as I understand the process, um, would, would, still look, would, would still be involved in a discussion which said this is how we're going to shape this particular cluster or series of um, sessions that come out of these cluster of issues. And they actually still participate in both the shaping of that um, plus um, uh, resourcing it as well. So I don't think that is, frankly, any less um, bottom up than the other process. But that's, you know, my, my understanding having had a bit of a crash course here the last night and, and this morning. Um, and I think what I'll do is we'll, we'll um, go through the, the queue that's here now. And G, with, with great thanks for putting in the queue. That means I, I won't forget you and I can just look one place to figure out who's in the, the speaking order. So that's really helpful. Maybe I could ask um, Sandra and or Thomas and anyone sorry, to come in and just after you've heard all these comments, if there's anything that, I mean, I, I have not participated in those processes, of course. If there's anything else that you think um, would be helpful for people to understand or um, anything even that I've misstated, um, just to come in and, and help kind of underline that discussion. And then I guess we would see where we would go in terms of the level of support for pursuing this in the room and, and the next steps. But just to give you all a heads up. Um, next in the queue is Rudolph. You have the floor. Um, thank you, and good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I, I am I'm very much pleased to hear that apparently um, on a regional level there has already been, not only in Europe but also in other regions like uh, Latin America and Africa, some kind of a uh, consolidated, curated, however you want to call it, approach um, this is something that I find very encouraging and we should, I think, learn from this regional wisdom also in the, in the IGF and in the MAC context. Um, the idea of uh, doing some kind of a two-tiered approach, um, having some uh, part of the IGF curated, for using the word I have no better one neither, and the other one the traditional way, um, I think that that is something that can be that can be well done this year because we are introducing a new idea and people like new ideas, but people also like traditional uh, proceedings. 
um, and afterwards we can evaluate how 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 this has worked, and then we can perhaps go uh, in an in an in a direction. Um, if if we do this um, two two child approach, I I think it is very very important what you just said that. Also, in the curated uh, area, there is a bottom-up element. There is this element of going out to the community, asking for themes, asking for, I think, ideally, themes in connection with workshop ideas. Um, and uh, I would, I would like to uh, echo what Vote has said uh, also on uh, uh, trying to uh, identify people who could uh, attend, not only from the inner community, but also from outside. Uh, and I am thinking not only of the, um, of, of the education system, but perhaps also, let's say, uh, traditional industries that are very much confronted with Internet issues these days, um, even though there are no traditional tech firms. Um, I. I, I have one last uh, 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 idea um, because we have been talking about uh, what we call the Geneva messages or will be the IGF messages later on. Um, I, I think that if we manage to have this bottom-up curated track, this would lend itself very well for at the end having precise and concise uh, messages. Um, the rest perhaps also, but I think if we manage to get to this point, this will really be uh, something where we can have an, a concrete outcome and, and, and a value, value added without, of course, uh, leaving out space for emerging issues and, and, and uh, the traditional approach. Thank you. No, thank you, Rudolf. Those are very helpful comments. Julian. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Julian Casas Buenas, uh, civil society um, MAC member. Um, I agree with the idea of uh, the consultations and to focus on um, themes. And, um, but I, I will say that it's important that we define which part uh, of the IGF applies for this, uh, this approach, only to the workshops or other sessions. Um, I also understand uh, uh, the importance of uh, merging the proposals, so it will be important that we define how this process will work. Um, for all the interventions this morning, I understand that EURD has experience on this, and I would like to know how it works in practical terms. Um, also to share the experience from LAC IGF. Uh, program committee. We have two MAC members uh, in this program, so maybe she will, will be able to uh, imp make uh, more inputs on that. And uh, remember that um, it has been uh, requested that the uh, workshop selection process uh, by MAC uh, need to be uh, transparent and with clear uh, guidelines. So um, I'm uh, when thinking about all these proposals, I think we have to uh, also uh, make uh, uh, this uh, in a clear way, um, including a timetable uh, of ex expectations for proposers. And um, also uh, recalling the APC proposal uh, on simplifying the structure of the IGF, uh, we were saying uh, that uh, it's um, important to consider having two days of workshop followed by two days of main sessions and round tables to enable deeper discussion on fewer topics. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you, Julian. Um, just to a couple of your earlier points, um, the workshop proposal process that we would follow for a significant portion of the IGF program would be the same as in the past, which is clear and against criteria and communication. And that would not be you know, de de degraded in any way. And I think the same thing applies for the other kind of curated process. We would obviously need to be very clear with the community about why the MAG was choosing to do what it was doing. 
um, with a rationale, obviously a clear timetable, clear criteria, um, but they are issues. And so there is no merging of proposals. It might be, I don't know, 15 submissions that were issues that some group of, as I understand it, some group of people would have to look at what those submissions were, collect the issue submitters, and with some subject matter experts, determine how they um, pulled those together. But it's not like you have a full thought out workshop proposal with your panels already chosen and, and that sort of thing. It's more, we think it would be interesting if the IGF talked about this particular issue from this particular perspective. Here's some of the people and organizations we think that would contribute to it. And those things are put together and there's a discussion had amongst a group of people that would actually shape a workshop or a track or several workshops is what I understand. So it's not, it's not merging the way we tend to think of merging, which I agree is, is a lot of work, painful, and, and frankly, I think doesn't usually lead to a successful um, outcome. So again, these are things which Sandra and Thomas and other folks can kind of clarify at the, at the end. Um, to your last point, um, I'm trying to think about where we might fit in a simplifying the structure of the APC, two days of workshops and two days of um, I don't know if that's more of a structure sort of thing that we can address a little bit later in the process. I don't think that anything we're doing just now makes that impossible. Um, I need to think about it a little bit more, and maybe you can as well and help me understand it. Maybe we can talk briefly over lunch as well. Uh, Liesl, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, Okay, so I, I've caught up a little bit on the on the uh, process piece, and I guess I just want to make a few observations. Um, I I really do I want to pick up on the comments made by Ben and Jennifer about the wanting to be sure that we preserve the bottom up approach for essentially all of the you know the program, and uh, I think possibly the um, your comments that this doesn't negate that, um, um, the, you know, this pr proposed curation process doesn't negate it, but I think parts of it feel that way to me. Um, because what it sounds like to me is that there's a piece of the program that is created essentially by the MAG rather than using the sort of workshop process to, to, to fill out the program. So I guess what I'm reacting to is that maybe there's a bit of a hybrid here that we could think about um, and, and that we could take up, you know, considering that we have, you know, a truncated time frame and this, you know, this issue about um, a bottom-up approach. I like the idea of the call for issues. Um, because you know we've used the tag approach and things like that in the in the workshop proposal process, but we have struggled with trying to guide workshop proposers on the kinds of topics that we'd like to, that we think make sense. So I, I really do like the call for issues, um, and I think that that could help inform um, main session discussions and thematic trends throughout the IGF program as it develops. But I do think that um, we still need to preserve the call for workshops, but I think that call for workshops should fill out the full program and then, as we, and then we curate the program, not curate individual workshops per se. Um, so that, and what, by that I mean, okay, we've got you know, X number of workshops on this topic that came out of, that fell out of the workshop evaluation process that we're all gonna undertake in some um, short period of time, <laughs> in the early summer probably. Um, so these are the workshops we have on this topic, so how do we uh, choreograph those throughout the program so that they follow a theme or, the, or whatever. But perhaps what this discussion that we're having here about having the MAG curate actually replaces or becomes the main session. Because what the main sessions, because what I'm hearing is that we'll have main sessions and then we'll have the workshops that come up from the workshop proposal process and then we'll have a piece of the program that is this curated program. And to me, we already kind of have a two-tiered 
IGF program with the main sessions vis-a-vis -vis the workshops, even though that's not the intent. It is sort of what happens by virtue of space, by virtue of the translation, by virtue of the level of the speaker sometimes. So we already have a two-tiered approach. I'd hate to interject a new tier into that. Um, so that there's a, even more of a hierarchical view to the program somehow. Um, so I'm wondering if this curation we're talking about is not only of the program as a whole and then perhaps of the main session. And what I'd say is that doesn't misalign with the guidelines that we put forward for the main sessions with um, themes uh, um, and the input from the community that main session organizers are supposed to undertake in any case. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can maybe square the two conversations a little bit. Um, I think there's agreement in the MAG that we were using the word, you, you said curation of the whole program. I think it's ensuring cohesiveness or something. So whatever words we use, I think we're, we're in agreement that that's a, a step that the MAG, which we have taken some efforts to do that in past years, but needs to do probably even more intentfully going forward. Um, um, I, I didn't actually hear, at one level, a lot of difference in what you su were suggesting versus what I think, you know, some portion of the room, well, of the, of the mag, online as well, is, um, is saying, other than perhaps the number of slots you would actually allocate to this curated process. You would have that be kind of a main session set of slots, whereas I think with others it was probably um, more in line with either a kind of a track kind of mentality. There might be a main session and a few other sessions, or there might just be a bunch of individual sessions. I don't think that was predetermined either way through that process, but I, what I'm and the reason I'm trying to do that is I'm trying to say that I, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything with respect to where you think we you might be. You have been be. disconnected by the host. Can anybody still hear everybody? <clears throat> no, I think the oh, no, the remote's lost. Well, I think we should just wait a couple of minutes. I don't think it'll take that long. Okay. Does that mean we lose transcri transcription when the scribes? Yeah. Not... Okay, so... Um, Let's just wait. Everybody can take a deep break, I guess, while we get the online back on and hang up or
connect to your meeting, please enter your assigned code. Now joining, you are muted by the host. Four other participants. ID accepted. Connect to your meeting, please enter your assigned code. Now joining, you are muted by the host. Two other participants. ID accepted.
Hello. To connect to your meeting, please enter your assigned code. We did not detect any digits. Now joining, you are muted by the host. Two other participants. ID accepted. Hello. To connect to your meeting, please enter your assigned code. Now joining, you are muted by the host. Two other participants. ID accepted. The conference call is now ending.
runs, you know, she's very behind. efficient. Hi, Scribes, can you hear us or no? Yeah. 
calling the scribes. Can you hear us? Testing, testing, one, two. To your meeting, please enter your assigned code. We did not detect any digits. Please enter your assigned code. We did not detect any digits. Please enter your assigned code. We did 
not detect any digits. Please enter your assigned code. Now joining, you are muted by the host. One other participant. ID accepted. You are now unmuted.
It's working. Apparently, we now have yeah. mics, but okay. do we have um, audio out? Okay. So you can't hear. You cannot so can hear. hear. Yeah. They're open, but they're not. They're mics, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to reset. Your yeah. Mic. You can't. You need to reset your headphones. Okay. Which reset? Which reset? Uh, just hit any buttons will work. Oh. <laughs> I can hear you. I really do think we should just Yeah. No. I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. <laughs> Almost any button. Oh, it. it. <laughs> no. The mics. <laughs> right. Hello. But we still no. don't have audio out for WebEx or yes, online, right? No, no, we don't have. Do we have audio out for? Oh, okay. We're ready to roll. Uh, See? Just patient. <laughs> thank you, thank you, ITU. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, that was just in the nick of time because otherwise we were facing a very hard decision. For those of you that are online, no transcription was possible. No. WebEx recording was possible because there was no audio out. So um, very happy we're all we're all back here. Um, can somebody bring up the queue? That screen is. Okay, so G, you have okay. the floor. Okay, thank you, Madam. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm so happy to have this chance, uh, and because uh, I have so many meetings to follow, so I am I'm always late. So I don't know what happened uh, when I was not here. Um, regarding the evaluation or, or selection of workshops, um, uh, I feel that uh, you know merit is very important, but. Uh, uh, we also have to consider uh, what kind of elements was cons taken into consideration in, as, as merits is uh, uh, concerned. And uh, for us, fairness is also very important. So our approach should be, you know, merit-based fairness. To get fairness, we have to uh, select or arrange the workshop in a way that um, uh, equal geographical distribution, uh, which is the cardinal principle of UN, is guaranteed. For example, we have 200 workshops each year. We can you know, distribute the number of quota or chances of having workshops for each region or continent uh, Take considering the total population of each continent and the number of the countries in each region. For example, we have 200, and Africa, the, the total population of the world is like 7 billion. Africa have 1 billion. They got have uh, like 12% or 13% of, of the number of the workshops. And the competition or selection of the workshops uh, is among Africans. Um, that uh, and uh, one another thing I like to bring up is that last year there were some American colleagues make propose workshop proposals in the name of China, but when I look at the names, they are all American names, and that's that's very strange. And I don't know how do we handle such things in the future. But I I would like to uh, to urge you know people that uh, you know when they make proposals try their best that uh, you know the the the, the, uh, it, the you know it corresponds with their their passports otherwise we will be very much confused and that's uh, that's what i want to say at uh, this 
this moment. But uh, to back up my argument, you know, in in uh, in U.S., when Chinese, Japanese, and the Korean students, if they want to get into the Ivy League colleagues, uh, colleges and the universities, they usually have to uh, uh, have 100 or 200 m score points more than other uh, students of other ethnic uh, origin. So this kind of uh, reversal discrimination is necessary to make sure that uh, fairness and the uh, uh, equal geographical uh, distribution is realized. Thank you. Uh, thank you, G. I mean, there's always a lot of things we're trying to balance um, in this process. And I think if there's some um, concrete suggestions we can make as we actually move through the actual process and the evaluation, that would be helpful. Um, I, I don't, at this point in time, I, I mean, I don't, I think that conversation just needs to take place at a later one if there's things we need to do to ensure a better, you know, a better, a better balance. I don't think it's a pure numerical exercise, though. Um, Valentina and Thomas are the next two in the in the queue. Valentina, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Uh, so yes, I have a few points. Uh, the first one is that since I'm also part of Eurodig and I was part of the organization, I'm. We are all for, you know, uh, inclusiveness and openness and also in the call for issue. But I just want to, you know, make us mindful and aware of the fact that already in Eurodig, but also as our colleagues pointed out in other region, this call for issue that it's open happens. Already in Eurodig, we have eight cluster or basket or call it as you wish. And I guess it's the same for the other region and these are people, you know, coming from a similar perspective or point of view. So precisely because we don't want to neglect anyone, we might end up having 50 or 60 <laughs> baskets in the end if it's a global process. So the mag will still need to sort of cluster the cluster. Pardon my, <laughs> my words. So yes, we will still probably have a bit of an ends on uh, curated uh, role in this, otherwise we end up basically having, again, too many sessions, too many clusters, too many everything. My second point was for Jennifer's comment, but um, I don't think she's here now. But here both uh, Thomas and Sandra can correct me if I'm wrong, but the subject matter expert in Eurodig is not at all meant to be uh, or yes, yeah, Sorina too. Uh, one of the mm, you know one of the speaker in the panel, or to scare off newcomers, they just are there to cluster better the, the proposal precisely because they are expert in the issues. So yes, that was just a clarification, I think, right, Thomas, if I'm not wrong. And yes, the third point was that I'm not sure I understood Liesel proposal before, but having a curated men session is basically what we the mag already kind of does. I mean, we have the main session that somehow we, we yeah, decide what are the you know, most pressing issues, and then we have all the workshops. And if we go with that proposal, I'm not sure what we are changing. And I have to say that I noticed that in the three days, in the beginning, we had some sort of cross-cutting agreement in that we need to change something, and there was a lot of energy, but right now, this is declining, sadly. So I just don't want that in the end, you know, we have the approach that we have to change everything in order not to change anything. Just <laughs> thank you. Thank you, and thank you for, uh, to all colleagues for the relevant questions and comments. Just to put one thing very clear, um, the idea behind this the way that Eurodic does it and, and, and the way it's actually done is by no means meant to weaken the bottom-up uh, approach or to, to reduce that. On the contrary, this, the bottom-up, inclusive and bottom-up approach is what makes the IGF Eurodic and hopefully the other IGF structures as well different from the hundreds or probably thousands of internet governance conferences that there are. So this is the as you want to say, the unique selling point of, of why this is so important to, to, to continue to develop the IGF, to make that point very clear. 
Um, by making a call for issues, it is actually even strengthening the bottom-up approach because there's no small group, be it the MAC or anybody else, that decides what are the priorities. No. You go out to the people, you ask them, what do you want to see discussed? So that is actually uh, yeah, the maximum of bottom-up approach that, that you can get. The only thing is you need to make sure, and that is the challenge everywhere, that people know about this call that they respond, that it's not just the ones, the usual suspects that respond to these calls, but it's people from uh, rural areas, from, from, from let's say groups with, with more difficulties to access these things that they respond. But also there, if you ask of them to come up with a, with a workshop proposal, the threshold for people to participate is way higher than if you just ask them what are the issues that are burning under your fingers, if we say in German. So, it is, again, this is, this is to keep it as bottom-up as possible. It's not to, to get it under the control of a small group of people. I think this is not the direction that, that we should go. It's just a question of how to make it operational. And, and the, the, the experience that we've had with the subject matter experts that are hand-picked in the sense that they are, these are people that over the years have proven that they are not... They may be lobbyists or activists in their in the normal life, but in a Eurodig or in, in this context, they step away from that and they try to help with their experience to come up with inclusive, with inclusive groupings of these things that actually everybody feels him or herself represented. So that, that is, uh, that is the, 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 the situation and that has proved to, to, to work quite well. So whatever the, the, the MAG does or the IGF does, it should not reduce the bottom-up approach. But we should try and find ways to, to actually make things, make it easier for people to participate. And then the question is, and I think Liesl in particular uh, made some, some relevant points. The question is, how do you want to apply the bottom-up approach to the different formats or the different spaces that you offer in, 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 uh, at the IGF? As, as, as uh, uh, Valentina has just said, there has been a curated approach always to the main sessions where the MAG somehow has sorted this out and defined priorities. And then that has been completely separated from the workshops where you received hundreds of proposals. And then you have a problem that you have too many parallel things. And, and, and also with regard to geographical balance and, 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 and of course, the needs uh, are different in different countries of the world. But the idea would, would not be to have uh, 15 workshops for Asia, and 10 workshops for Europe, and five workshops for Latin America, because we have the Eurodic to dim discuss among ourselves, and you all have your, your regional ideas. We want to have an exchange across the region, so the, the whole distribution of workshops or whatever, allocating it according to regions, is, 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 is a little bit missing the point, because we want to get together and learn from each other, and learning normally ideally goes both ways, and, 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 and so we need to find other criteria than just pure numbers or, or what we have that help us to actually get more to substantively quali qualitative workshops that still respect diversity and inclusivity rather than, than what we've had so far on purely facts that if you put some names in from different continents then you, you, uh, and from different stakeholders, then you look like fulfilling the criteria. But what you end up with five months later may be something quite different. So the question is, what, what do you want? And in the situation that we may not have, from a venue point of view or whatever, not may have room for 11 workshops at the same time, we may have to somehow find ways to condense things. And so to, to have the issues to ask the community about the issues helps you to prioritize, gives you legitimation to say so and so many feedback want to discuss this, so we may allocate some more time to, to that area, of, or to these issues, than to others. But still, there are also some that want to discuss this, so we have to allocate also some space to these. So it actually gives you more legitimation to maybe uh, deal with the workshops in a different way. Thank you. Th thank you, Thomas. Um, that, was, that was very helpful. Um, just quickly, we, we so sadly lost about 45 minutes that we so badly needed. Um, you know, my goal was to get through this section and come out with a plan for how we were going to progress through for um, filling the workshop space, if you will, before the lunch break. 
because of all the critical things we have to do afterwards. And all the critical things we have to do afterwards are almost impossible to do in any kind of timely manner if we take it to virtual meetings and mail. We need to find a way to wrap this discussion up in the next half hour, which doesn't necessarily mean we have to get to agreement, but if we have um, some open points or different versions of models, we need to task a few people to go away and in some very concrete way outline what this process would look like and what it would mean and pros and cons so that we can advance it very, very quickly. Um, there's the option for some people to meet over lunch, I guess, and, and try and advance it that way. Um, this is really unfortunate and um, again, as always, we're trying to do an awful lot in uh, just a a few days here with no no head start. So I say that just to ask everybody to kind of keep their comments really specific to what your recommendation is to move forward or questions or, or clarifying um, questions if in fact you're um, unclear or not supportive or but we need to we need to find a way to start moving um, forward to a to a point of agreement. Um, Sandra, you have the floor. Hope you can be very helpful here with all your experience. Sandra, we can't hear you yet. Is it the audio? Is it just San Sandra? Could we hear Alejandra was next in the queue? Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Alejandra. It's a little bit faint, but I'm sure we can turn our volume up. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm Alejandra Ramuse from the government of Uruguay, AGESIC. I'm also a member of the LAC ICF program committee. I have some comments, maybe with some delay. Online participation, as you know, has not been easy this time. I assure you that. I think this is an aspect that we must take care of in order to continue encouraging participation. About the point, one, I agree with the suggestion for changes in relation to the ICS format. Pure parallel sessions, no more than eight, I think, condensing teams, sessions with new formats, the idea of basket brought by Thomas. I think these changes are necessary. Second, regarding the aforementioned teams or baskets, I don't know if gender was pointed out. Otherwise, I would like to include it. I, I understand that it's an, a transversal issue, and it is fundamental that this perspective is hard to be there. And third, I think it's good to make a public consultation to hear the voice of the community and from what they say to find the main tracks. This strengthen the bottom-up approach that is one of the founding principles of the ICS. I sent an email to the MacLeod so that everyone can see the public consultation we do in our region and in LAC region. It is in, in Spanish, but I hope that everyone can understand at least the general sense of this consultation and the format that the meeting has said, has that I think I think can be very useful for the ICS too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alejandra. That was very clear. Thank you. Sandra? Sandra, do you want us to try and come back in a in a moment? Maybe um, Layla or somebody can help you with. Um, in the meantime, we'll go on to the next person in the queue, which is Mamadou. Thank you, Chair. Giving me the floor, Mamadou from Senegal. As some colleagues stated earlier, I agree to go for 
the call for issues for IGF Demil 2008. Think that will really help share more and engage the community to the IGF process. I also appreciate the IGF learning best practices from Eurodig, CDIG, LAC, also Africa. But my concern still, I still have concern on how to reach a wide community to make issues proposal. As for that, I will come again, again and again to state we do need a call for issues, version in other languages apart from English to reach more people. Also, trying to respond to, to Tao from China, his concern stressed the importance of the orientation session. I find very useful, which I find very useful for, the, for, for, for Newmark. Perhaps the experience we have on this, this year will help in, enhance the scheduled Newmark members on new members' work design on the IGF. Thanks very much. Uh, th thank you, Mamado. We can certainly look at the languages issue and to the orientation session just very quickly. Um, we should follow up. We said we would set, schedule a second follow-up orientation session now that people have gone through a mag um, and we'll reach out to um, everybody and see what sort of issues and topics would be helpful. But we will take the, the um, responsibility to reach out and schedule another one. Um, let me see. Sandra, are you able to connect now? Hello, what? Madam Chair, can you hear me now? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, oh, Sandra. Oh, wonderful. Yes, thank you. I'm sure it's <laughs> very access. frustrating. Thank you. Um, I'm so sorry. The access code changed from the last call, so I was using the old one. I didn't realize that this has changed. Thank you uh, so much, and sorry for that. Um, on just one clarification, and uh, Valentina and Thomas actually uh, summarized it quite well already. Um, I think with the word curated, we are on a totally wrong track of describing the process. It is really just another way of managing the ideas of the submitters and of the broader community without rejecting uh, any of the proposals and without including and excluding any submitters. And basically the selection process the mark is doing so far is in a process of exclusion at some points because you have to reject some workshop submitters and others are accepted. And this in the past created a lot of frustration on those who had not been accepted. And actually what we are trying to do with our merging and clustering process is to bring much more objectives into the process and not leave it to the subjective few of some member who are looking at it. And um, we are just bringing all those together who are thinking in the same direction anyway, but might be rep representatives of different stakeholder group. We think we really uh, have been quite successful in the past to really bring together the business with the civil society, the government, and the technical community. And here sometimes with the IGF it is the problem that those groups stay within their silos and only meet in the main sessions. But actually, if you take the word workshop really literally, we should come up with something else than a little plenary. And having such a broad uh, multi-stakeholder and participative process in advance actually helps us much more to really gain some workshops instead of little plenaries, what is sometimes still the case. I stop here and thank very much for the opportunity to speak and for trying with me three times. Thank you. No, th thank you, Sandra. And, and again, thank you to everybody that's participating online. Again, it's not, not easy. Kenta, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Chair. I um, appreciate it this time. Um, after, actually, I listened to the you know, various discussions here, and uh, I did be garrosed. Uh, but I'd like to you know, make a very concrete uh, suggestion here. Um, the, so first of all, you know, coming back to the basic, uh, the discussion of deciding about the theme and the sub themes should be separated from the discussion of reducing the number of various sessions or struct structuring sessions. Open call for issues might be useful for deciding over our theme and sub themes uh, because in any case we have to decide them because there are some of the requirements uh, for session proposals. And if we take this approach, we have to start uh, as soon as possible. 
Uh, but at the same time, we should better start to call for workshop proposals uh, as soon as possible at the same time, so that all stakeholders can have enough time to, to prepare. And it depends on us which session proposals should be selected and how many sessions should be selected. We have a session selection or evaluation process sometimes before the summer, because I experienced it in the previous year. Um, then, regarding the latter, the selection of various sessions, I think we can make necessary changes to a session proposal form to accommodate everyone's request, like tags. And we can take a bottom-up or a curated approach, you know, whatever expression is. I mean, based on the popularity or importance of some tags, we can decide what kind of main sessions should be organized. Taking into account that we have uh, tons of things to do throughout this year's IGF, we should take an efficient and effective approach. In this aspect, I think we are all on the same page. Thank you. Thank you, Kenda. Kenda, some useful, useful comments. Tamea? Thank you, Chair. Tima Ashuta speaking for the record. With a very feeble voice still, I'm very sorry. Um, I would like to emphasize just a few points made earlier by Jennifer, Paul, Ben, and Liesl, and Kenta just now about preserving the bottom-up inclusive nature of the IGF and of IGF planning and being mindful of balance of different perspectives, be that regional or stakeholder priorities or anything um, else. I really wonder if approaches that work regionally or nationally are scalable for the global work and as Valentina said, not to end up with 60 baskets and then ask the MAC to do a lot of extra work on the top of what we've already agreed to do. And I'm not sure all of us newcomers even know what we have signed up for and how much work we will have in the coming months. So keeping that in mind and keeping the task at hand and the time we have for them, I think um, our best way forward is to keep things simple. Um, what the MAC can do is perhaps set a framework for the community to have the opportunity to discuss the issues that are important to them. And we have a well-working method in place for calling for workshops already with tags, as Kenta said, or even with an extra question of what's the issue of importance to you that signal what the community wishes to talk about. And based on these, we can identify some priority baskets. And we can also cap the number of workshops we accept per basket. Um, so we limit the huge number of sessions we all agree that are too hard to follow. Um, and we can make sure that those workshops present the views from each stakeholder group, each region. Um, and this means some workshops are accepted as they are, and some might be asked to merge to ensure higher quality. Um, and to echo a point from yesterday, um, when we propose mergers where necessary, we have to make sure they're seen not as punishments, but as opportunities for people to work together. Um, and then we can make all of this clear, very clear in the call for workshops. Um, and I actually like Liesl's point about these baskets that are selected from the tags from the community um, inform what we discuss for main sessions um, so that we have coherence uh, overall uh, for the program and the MAG can curate those sessions, um, if you will. Um, but I would like us to keep in mind that the time we have to do this, the resources we have to do this, and I hope that we can agree to keep things simple and move forward. Thank you. I think we're all very much in agreement with not losing bottom up and, and all the other really key community consultation principles. I, I don't think we're looking to add complexity either. I think at the same time we need to think about how we respond to so many of the things we've been hearing through the stock taking process, which actually has to do with the output and progressing issues. And so I think we're trying to balance a number of things, but there clearly are a whole bunch of core things that we just wouldn't wouldn't give away, wouldn't lose. and. And honestly, I don't think in the proposals we've heard here that people are suggesting that we walk away from, from any of those. So I just want to kind of put people at ease that I don't think we're going to walk away from a lot of the, the really core, core principles. Uh, next in the queue, um, I'd ask Marcus if he would speak to um, the BPFs, I think, unless you were coming in on something else. Marcus, you Yes, look. thank you. Yes, I was just going to say if we have a collecting issues, there's an awful lot of expertise in ongoing work. I'm speaking now with my, my hat on as co-facilitator of the BPF on cybersecurity, but also as co-facilitator of the Dynamic Coalitions 
and there is an awful lot of substance in there and they may have issues to signal to the mag that may be worth taking up and the same actually also applies to the NRIs. It will be interesting that we do have a very broad network where we can also reach into developing countries hearing from them as that is a concern, a valid concern expressed by some colleagues that we may have to make sure that we also listen to developing countries and with that network we can plug in into their concerns. If you allow me, I would put on my other hat as chair of the IGF Support Association for a brief commercial. We have this orientation session at the request of a MAG member at 2.15 in this room. That's about the IGF Support Association. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. And a very good reminder with respect to you know a lot of the, the um, information we already have available coming out of those practices and certainly any kind of process call, et cetera, should, should specifically solicit input from all of those other efforts. Raquel? Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, just uh, before going, I have a very concrete uh, suggestion on the, the also on how to move us forward. Uh, but just in terms of the logistic uh, problems, I would like to uh, to offer one of the video conferencing tools that we've been using, which is called the Zoom. Um, it's uh, really we've been testing with the community with up to 200 people connecting being stable and uh, having also the call-in options. Uh, and so if there is no opposition and the secretary is willing to, to try it, um, the offer stands. Um, so it's not only pointing for the problems, but bringing some solutions. Uh, and also, now going concretely, I, I, I think I've heard um, many of the, the, the proposals before, and I thank um, everyone also for, uh, for this, because um, it, it's helpful now that we, we go more, more concretely. Um, and so building on that, what I would um, suggest is a three uh, phases approach for this uh, teams, workshop proposals, and integrate and, and program shaping. Uh, the first one would go into, um, by, by what we heard yesterday, I think we, we, we have already a good basis for the teams to at least identify some of the teams that is around um, and put shortly a call for the community to evaluate if that's what they, they are really willing to discuss or if they want to bring new, new, new topics uh, on board. And not only having the titles, uh, but having a short description and being open uh, for the different angles that could have uh, a certain topic or a certain category might have around it. Um, that could be done um, shortly, and I think uh, all the stakeholders have also the compromise to bring to their own communities and, and spread as much as, as possible uh, and get this feed. Uh, the number of the teams is also important, so I'm speaking of the first layer uh, or the first tab uh, still. Um, should be based on the potential uh, slots. Uh, so that's why to, to have still the discussions on how many uh, parallel sessions we are able to, to have is important because this will also help to limit the number of the teams uh, or to give us a realistic check on the number of the teams possible. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. Then for the second approach, um, which is putting out the, once we have an idea of the, this categories thematic, uh, uh, more thematic approach, uh, we do the call for the workshop proposals as we used to do, uh, perhaps with a few tweaks. Um, and, and that's what we, uh, we're inviting the community to, to uh, self select them into one of those cluster categories. Um, and then uh, the evaluation, which would be the third phase, uh, would be done with the methodology system that we selected, perhaps with just this tweak on the review uh, by issue <coughs> cluster, uh, where you would still ensure the, the, the mood stakeholder of the MAG representative in geographical gender um, and stakeholder group. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, we still need to, to have the, the, in the second physical meeting, the rebalance approach. Uh, but I think we will be able to, 
uh, to look much better on uh, after the evaluation of the workshops per issue uh, or per team or per, per category, whatever you want to call, um, and then making this, this balance happen. Um, and I didn't hear that um, uh, on the proposals, but I, I also think uh, we should, on the second part or on the thematic part, we should consider integrating everyone. And I think Marcus was going into the intersessional work, the DCs, the NIRs. Uh, we should really think on everybody uh, self-selecting and going for this, um, this clustering um, idea. And uh, of course, if we try this to innovate a little bit and, and there are missing points, we can still uh, rebalance and, and revisit as needed. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Raquel. I'm um, still trying to digest that and think about the earlier conversation, so I think I'm just going to move to the next speaker in the queue. G, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I, I would like to say that uh, what uh, works well in Europe or works for Europe doesn't mean that it works for the whole world. And IGF is a UN mechanism, and it should, we should work in UN way. Actually, I don't understand, because my English is so poor. What does curation mean? What does curated approaches mean? Simply for that reason, I don't support it. And uh, in my view, uh, bottom-up is very important. Uh, when, when proposals, workshops come in, issues come in, uh, naturally, why should we call for issues? Because the situation is always developing. People's interests, their, their, their concerns always change. And uh, when, you know, even when we have all the issues on our agenda, uh, can we make sure that uh, the voices from all over the world being heard? Do we, can we make sure that people from Africa, Asia, Latin America, uh, you know, their speak, have panelists and the speakers be present in the meeting. If we only have the issues uh, on, on the agenda, and it is uh, European countries talking about uh, 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 internet access in Africa, would that work? Internet access in Europe is so expensive. How can we expect Europeans to find a solution for African? That is very funny. And thirdly, number does matter. This is a very important part of democracy. It's, it's not the only part of democracy, though. Um, I'm, yeah, I don't like populism, but uh, we do have to take into the num number into consideration. The number of population, number of countries, when we choose w w workshops. Thank you. Thank you, Xi. Um, I'm not going to comment on your last point again, because I think that was covered earlier, just in the interest of time. But for your first one, I am very happy to strike the word curation. It's not a word I've liked since the first time I used it and have, have asked for um, other suggestions. From Sandra, we actually heard um, kind of managing the program. So if we can all continue to think about what this role would be, which I think simply has an active role, maybe a more active role, or maybe just an active role for more parts of the program than what the MAG has had in the past is, I think, what we're all talking about when we talked about trying to streamline or thread or, or feed or, um, but very happy to strike the word curation and, and we'll find some other words going forward. Um, I'm going to close the queue after Liesel and Wisdom here and then um, see if we can figure out where we're going forward from, from here um, in order to bring something back immediately after lunch. But the focus after lunch has to be on some of the other really critical um, areas we need to at least kick off and then determine a path forward. Uh, Liesel, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to address a couple of questions people may have had about my comments earlier. Um, one is that I really do love the idea of the call for issues, um, not only for an organizational construct, but also, um, as Thomas said, for really um, 
addressing the bottom up approach and I think that we can use it really well especially in the phasing that we need to do in order to get to the program that we're then going to manage um, um, and I, I'm now not sure I think maybe Valentina asked or Raquel asked about um, the, the my comment about the main session thing um, and my point was that perhaps rather I didn't mean to say that there wouldn't be any change with regard to that in this particular construct that we're trying to grapple with, but perhaps it could be part of the change um, of that we're trying to, you know, once we have the issues, we can use that for the main sessions and we can use that for some tracking or thematic clustering in the program. Um, so perhaps it's just a little more incremental or, or uh, in, uh, adjustments than wholesale change. Thank you so much to Sandra for her description of um, their, their process and, and intent. I, that, w that really was helpful. But I th um, the only thing I would say is that, um, that as we're dealing with the program for the IGF, the global IGF, the workshop proposal process, unless we're going to scrap it all together, which I don't think anybody is proposing, um, then we need to make that, put that into the process. Um, and I think I called it a hybrid of change, perhaps, or a hybrid adjustments um, for this program management process that, that we're, I think, trying to get our hands around. And I really liked the phasing um, approach that Raquel took because it went right to my mechanic mecha mechanics heart of how we get this done. Um, so I think it wasn't far from what I was thinking when I was talking about the process of um, the, of what we need to do. Um, and so I really like that kind of um, phasing and and making sure that the the process feeds what we're trying to get to for us as well. Sorry it wasn't as short as you might have liked. <laughs> No, no, it was it was fine, um, and we're not necessarily looking for brevity. We're really looking for clarity and things that help move us forward. So that was excellent. Thank you. Um, next in the queue is wisdom. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, um, for giving me the floor. Uh, I have some few um, notes here. Uh, unemployment is very serious challenge facing states of any nation, most especially uh, in the developing, the developing country, uh, as it has the ability to promote crime, poverty, and social unrest. The goal of every responsible state is to address and cut down the rate of unemployment. That will intend to reduce crime, uh, cyber attack, and all that. Before the advent of internet, most unemployment people are constrained to few jobs. Opportunities like white scholar job, uh, agriculture, and other semi-skilled jobs. Most graduates roam around the streets, uh, most especially in Africa, for jobs. Many years uh, without success. Uh, the arrival of uh, internet created a lot of new jobs, uh, opportunities for young people all over the world. Uh, most young people who are internet compliant uh, have no need to wait for states or other entrepreneurs for job creation, as there are several job opportunities uh, on the internet. Internet again has created job opportunities like blogging, uh, cryptocurrency mining, uh, cryptocurrency trading, software engineering, Apple developing, uh, web developing, and social media management, among others. The role of uh, internet in job creation cannot be overemphasized given the fact that it has played a significant role in reducing the rate of unemployment uh, in Africa and the global at large. And I I think all will agree with me on this. Again and again, uh, the internet accounts for a significant and growing por uh, portion of global GDP. Internet-related consumptions and expenditure, if measured as a sector, 
is now bigger than agriculture or energy. So uh, the internet is a vast mosaic of economic activities ranging from millions of daily online transactions and communications to smartphones, download of TV shows, etc., etc. But little is known about the, the web in its entirety uh, contributes to global growth, productivity, and unemployment. Um, there is a research, uh, the latest McKenzie research stated, um, uh, stated on average, the internet contributes 3.4% to GDP in the in 13 countries uh, that it conducted a research on. And these countries were on the G8 uh, uh, summit. Uh, the countries that took part in the GA summit and then most of the economic values created by the internet falls outside of the technology sector with 75% of the benefit captured by companies in more traditional industries. Uh, internet is also a catalyst for a job, job creation. Uh, another survey among 4,800 small and medium-sized enterprises surveyed by McKenzie Institute uh, stated that the internet created again 2.6 jobs for each lost to technology related uh, efficiency. Uh, we are also talking about connecting the next billion. Um, and where does the next billion come from? I think uh, it comes from Africa. The developed country uh, have developed and they are still developing and all that. But where do we stand as a developing country? So I think um, this year's IGF should be tailored towards the developing countries. And when you go to the developing countries, uh, you see most of the developed countries in there doing jobs and then gaining money and then transporting their money back to their countries. So I'll be happy if uh, we can uh, channel some of our efforts towards uh, the developing uh, countries. And then again, uh, for the main session, um, I'm very happy to see that almost everyone is in agreement that we should have a high level uh, session that will bring uh, these government officials uh, to, to engage among themselves, uh, to know some of the best practices within uh, the internet governance. Uh, the other issue too is on education. It looks as if uh, little has been talked about education, but it is also very important. When you go to the developing countries, uh, it, it, looks, it looks like the olden days, the materials that they were using in the olden days is still what they are still using now. And it looks like internet uh, governance uh, courses or whatever it is, it's like it's been fall outside. So we also have to find a way uh, to actually include education in our uh, what we'll be doing this year so that uh, states can begin to think to include uh, internet governance in the curriculum, in the educational curricul curriculums from stage one up to the university and what that, and that will also help to a large extent in bridging the uh, digital gap. Uh, so I think this is what um, I have. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Wisdom. I mean, many, many good points there, and I, I think a number of the. Uh, lastly. <laughs> and, 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 and briefly, please, we're yeah, over. Time. It's, it's brief. I tend to support um, G on the regional balance. Uh, in workshop selection. Thank you. No, I mean it's certainly that regional balance is is important in the in the workshop selection process. Um, the I didn't say numeric. I said regional balance. <laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> as I was saying, a lot of the points you brought up were um, obviously your your comments are very um, very important and matter to a lot of people here. And I think a lot of the topics were caught in kind of the basket of issues we. We caught yesterday. If not, and if they don't come through the call for issues, we should certainly make sure they're they're caught in there. Um, well, I think what I would propose at this time, because we're over um, time, and I know people have um, 
I'll come to you in a moment, Mary. I didn't see your name up there before. Have um, lunch appointments is to ask for a, a small group of people. I think those that have been kind of maybe the most active or most um, proponent here in describing this, maybe to, to build um, on and possibly we start with Raquel's um, last po um, thing to build on that and talk a little bit about what that would look like so we just don't capture the current state and we don't lose the state that we've actually captured here. There's a lots of points of agreement that we've that we've captured or principles that we're trying to operate to, such as less tracks and less repetitive sessions and and um, um, see if we can capture um, that to bring back today. But I would probably move to the, I'll, I'll confer with the secretary here, but probably move to some of the other items that we just have to make some progress on, even if it's only to open them up and figure out where and how they get dealt with in our process going forward. Um, so if people are okay um, with that, Raquel's saying she would, would support anybody else. I mean, it's an open, we'll just meet here um, in the room quickly somewhere, recognizing that Marcus has it from 2.15 on, so, and I have another meeting at 1.45, so I'll be leaving by then. Um, I'll take Mary's comment and then we'll um, break for lunch. Mary? Thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity. I think my hand is down. <laughs> the, the richness of giving back time. Um, is, is that okay as an approach? If a few of us just get together and try and kind of capture where we think we are and what that process might look like going forward. I see heads nodding in the room and hopefully um, can't have those plus ones in the chat room or to that or not. but. Um, we will get back at 3 o'clock um, with the same system we're using here. I mean, whether or not we move to something in the future is future, but I'm not wanting to change kind of the variables just now. It feels like a fairly precious <laughs> or sensitive system. So thank you very much. Thank you for staying um, over time, too.